Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we're going to talk about The Expanse, Season 1, Episode 7, it's called Windmills, full spoilers for the episode as always. This episode, obviously it picked up on some things that were set up in the last one that seems smaller, but became bigger things here. I think one of the big ones we were like, what's the point of this exactly in the last episode was the, the uncle and the nephew and the Martian boarding ship. Now... Yeah. The nephew might still pop up as a thing, but I think the main reason for that now was to present as the the Martian boarding ships and the boarding party and how that works, so that we'd have an understanding of what was at risk in this episode. I agree, but at the same time, I feel like if that's all it is, we spent a bit too much time with that last episode. I would agree, which is why I think the, the, the nephew might still... But, yeah, like it, it might do, and I hope it does, because otherwise it feels like that was a lot of time just for that because one Because I'm purpose. pretty sure they're in the same sector now. Right. You know, I, I think they're getting into that same sector, which is why I'm thinking that they might run, just run into them when they just always float yeah. in space. So, which may, may be a little bit coincidental, but or someone else will pick him up or whatever, but that, that, was, that was the thing. The other thing, of course, was we teased the spy that was uh, watching them and recording with the, the eye camera. And hmm. turns out he snuck onto the ship, the sneaky bugger. Why not? And uh, yeah, the the crew find out about him because they they notice a signal's been beamed off the ship, and like we're not doing that. Who's doing that? And uh, Amos goes and finds him, and we end up with this this prisoner situation. But the, the main the main crux of the whole thing is that because of his signal, the Martians have intercepted it, and are like, oh, what's this ship? Let's board them and inspect them. But of course, if the Martians step on the ship, they will quickly become aware that it's actually one of theirs and they will assume they've stolen it. And also they're saying that they're hauling goods and they're not, and it'll be very clear. Oh, right, well, yeah, but I, I think I think the fact that they've stolen a Martian ship will actually piss them off more. Probably, but just on the off chance that yeah. they don't notice that because they've you know done some stuff. Well, yeah, well, that was the whole point, is they, they, they might not notice it from the outside because they've dressed it up, but what, as soon as they step yeah. on board, if they board them, it's, it's done. Yeah. Like, they're going to, this is, wait, this is one of our ships. What the hell? But in fact, I'm pretty sure the ship they're coming towards them in is the same type. Or it may well least. be. Yeah, like, I, I thought it looked similar, and I'm like, oh, yeah. So they'll literally step off their ship, walk into this one and go, huh, that seems <laughs> yeah. familiar. Yeah. So that, that's what they're, they're uh, going against, and... There's a lot of the spy negotiating, and the way they get out of it is Martians have these code words that say, no, no, we're an undercover black ops vessel, and a lot of the, the plot's about them trying to get to the, the code words, which are in a box. They have a key that they got from Lopez, but the, <laughs> I have to laugh at 24 digit security code. I thought, four would have been enough. Yeah, yeah, no, that's <laughs> secure, that, 24. <laughs> 24 digits, like, they're not going to guess that. That, that's... that said, you've got more chance of guessing that than you have of guessing donkey balls. <laughs> I, I, no, I would disagree with that. I'll t- I don't know. No, don't get me wrong, I agree that donkey balls is... Like, just the phrase itself. A long shot, right? It is a long shot. But at least it's words that go together. 24 random numbers is so random... Yeah, I think that's more random. At least, at least there's the possibility that you would put those letters together to form those words. Those words have a meaning. Yeah, I suppose. Why, why you would jump to donkey balls? Yes, completely. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. At least with twenty four, you go. Okay, I'm gonna try. Try. You can put it through a computer to to crack twenty four digits. But but donkey balls. Come on, no one's thinking of donkey balls. Yeah, but if you only put it through a computer, then Donkey Balls has less characters, so it, it would crack that quicker. Uh, you, you, you're, you're, you're having different goalposts here. One's with a computer and one's just with guessing. Well, I just mean, it, sure, it's just numbers, but Donkey Balls is, is just so... I don't, know. I don't know. I actually really laughed. See, when they, actually, they eventually crack open the, 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 the safe or whatever and... They yeah. open it up, and uh, Kamal looks at the looks at the, the words, and he's like, uh, "Like he clearly doesn't know how to pronounce the, the two of them." Yeah. yeah, and I thought that was really funny. Me too. And then when he says all three, he just throws on donkey balls at the end, just 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 for good measure, just in case that <laughs> I, I one's like still the in play. Idea that maybe that is the one that is that let him get through. Yeah, we don't. Well, I assumed it was all three in conjunction. Like that's why I you have three, too. just in case you have to use one of them. Yeah. 
Although the, the last two are pretty specific, but you know, at least that that would be why they have three, so that you have to use them all in conjunction, and that's when they know right. It's yeah, yeah. But I like the idea that those weren't it at all, and it was just junk, just donkey balls the whole time. If you want to believe that, I'm not going to stop you. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't just try it. I know it was a long shot, but I don't know why I didn't just throw it into a message. <laughs> I also liked that every time he, he was like on the comms with them and he was trying to like make small talk to like stall them. He was like, "Yeah, buddy, yeah, yeah, we were just having a bit of trouble here." He was, he was putting on this really friendly voice, like instead of just yeah. sounding like a pilot coming yeah, in, like he was putting was... on this little this little character. Yeah, it's probably the the most fun his character has been in the show yet. Yeah, 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 he was all right. Uh, speaking of their characters, obviously Amos is uh, having a bit of a dark turn. He seems to have kind of let the events get to him a little bit, and he's I don't he's not unhinged. He's still very compass menace, but he he's kind of accepted a darker role. Yeah, it it's kind of like no, I've got this mission. This is gonna get fulfilled no matter what. And he, he's willing to kill people for it. And Holden, of course, is very much not for that. Yes, and uh, he even goes to Nagata and asks, asks her to try and talk some sense into him. We don't get a, a resolution to this in this episode. And I, I actually I did enjoy this episode a lot. I think the bigger stuff for this episode obviously comes from Miller on Ceres. The obviously we introduced the spy and that's always going to be a, a thing that's in play because we see that he's still got his camera in his eye. He can't connect to a, a network yet to send the the footage. So but even at though some he, point he yeah, will. Yeah, at some point he will. And even though he's trying to like sweet talk and be like, you know, be merciful, don't throw me out there, lock and all that. We yeah. know that this is still in place, so it's important in that sense. But the actual plot, well, I enjoyed it and it was a lot of fun. It was very much just an obstacle before we get to the main thing. Yeah, I, I, there was a lot of stuff I enjoyed, like uh, with Amos and Holden. You know, where he has the gun to his head and yeah. the, the the almost banter from Amos. It's like, yeah, yeah go on then, let's, let's see what you got. What I really liked about it is normally when that would happen, and you know, Holden pulls the gun on the back of his head and says, "I won't let you take these guys out. I will take you out first. Normally in that scene, you'd have the tensions would rise and it would turn into a bit of a standoff. Whereas Amos is just kind of like, "Yeah, oh, if you got to do it, you got to do it. I'm just gonna keep going." Yeah, it's basically like I don't really think you're gonna, so I'm just gonna yeah. pretend that you're not there. And then when they do send the, the code words through and the the Martian ship backs off. He just kind of turns around and smiles and goes, oh, that was close, wasn't it? And goes yeah, about his but, business. Yeah, but Holden looks really relieved that he didn't yeah. have to shoot him. But and, and I think that's the, the most worrying part about his character right now is that that's how he's how he feels about it. That's how he's reacting to things. He's, he's it's like he was ready to kill people and it was just like, oh, I didn't have to do that. Oh, I, I guess I'll go and have some tea. Yeah, pretty much. But, you know, just that very coffee on this show. Yeah. So, nah, I, I thought it was a fun little plot. Very much an obstacle before the main thing, but... Uh, I, I think it did obviously introduced some things and it did some character stuff that I'm sure the Amos stuff will come into play as well. Yeah. Uh, if not next time, then further down the line when it comes important. Although I feel like this show, more, more so than not, has been re- resolving these plot lines quicker than you might expect them to draw out. I agree, but I think that's just a, a symptom of only having 10 episodes this season, where sure, like, there's setting up things now at episode 7 hmm. there's only so much time they've got to resolve this now before it runs into season 2 ok maybe that's true now but I feel like it's been true all season that they've not been well yeah but I feel like everything's just condensed down it's like well this has got to be resolved before we do these events so it means that the time scale's all shortened for everything I don't know if I necessarily buy that I, I think there's I think there's more effort going into the pacing here than I don't think it's just a byproduct of only having 10 episodes I think there's actually some intelligence going into the writing. Oh, I mean, probably a bit both. Hmm. So, yeah, so that, that's them on the on the ship. Miller on Sea Res is kind of a broken man after the events of the last episode. We see him on the on the train on his own, kind of being mopey at the start of the episode, and he's trying to send like a message to the you know Julie's father yeah. about how yeah they gave me this case because they don't want it solved. That, that's this is the conspiracy of the whole thing, and. We see that he gets a message from someone that he'd, he'd try to contact about where Juliet went, and it turns out that there is a ship, a sort of uh, the B ship or whatever, the, the shuttle from the ship has actually arrived at the solar station. Uh, Aero, I think it was called. Aero, Aero, Eros. 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 There you go. Because that—that's where the 
uh, Holden and that ship say they're heading. That's where they're yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, brought, they're brought up in both scenes, which is really cool. It's a nice little subtle thing of all oh, these plots may be intersecting soon. Yeah. And it ends, of course, with Miller deciding to go there. He goes off in the hope of trying to crack this case and that maybe if Julia is still alive, that may be her that's there. She maybe did get off the the, the ship that we've seen around this, the first episode and she maybe did make it to the station. Uh, I, I don't know for sure if she did, but it's possible now. They're, they're certainly... It is. They're, they've given us enough that, okay, this could have happened. Yeah. And, and we, we know our ship was going to intercept this other ship that was carrying something from the Phoebe station. So all these things are kind of... It's actually a really neat thing where almost visually when you look at the map and you see her trajectory going towards this and you see then she went to the other station, it is almost like all the plot threads coming together mm. and intersecting over the one event. It's actually almost like a visual metaphor for the entire season. It is. It works really well in that sense. So, yeah, he has some good character stuff. He he, he goes and confronts Jared Harris and it's funny how Jared Harris is still being friendly with him even though he did put him in an airlock. He got... Yeah. The way, the way he says, though, that he'd have a home if he decides to come with them makes me think that maybe he wasn't actually going to kill him in the airlock. Maybe it was more of a scare tactic thing for... Yeah, because we, we never know, will we? Obviously, yeah. the, the goons got shot before they could have let him out, if that was the case. Yeah, so we don't know. It seemed like they might might have been going to kill him. But maybe it's like, like he was implying here. He wanted to break him to the point where he, he realised what was important. And he still yeah. doesn't believe that job's done. So that, that mm-hmm. could be the the point of that but yeah so, so he decides and what I like about him leaving the the series is he's been there all season he's been there for seven episodes and he's leaving at the end of this episode so when he leaves in that ship at the end it kind of feels like a big deal it feels like he's always been there he's been this staple everyone else obviously the people on earth have been on earth but every all the other characters have all been moving around constantly yeah. the, the, the guys in the ship went from the big ship to the small ship and then onto the Mars ship onto the little Mars ship to this space station back onto the Mars ship like you know they've been constantly yeah. moving whereas he's been this staple this rock in this one place and it feels more than the Earth stuff because it's had just a lot more screen time hmm. over the season so it feels more important now that this is happening yeah so him, him like Ventry now it's kind of like what we said about the last episode with the team making the choice to be proactive this feels like him making a similar choice where he's I mean he's been kind of proactive all season but this is him really being proactive where he's deciding to really go the extra mile he he cares about solving this case more than just because it's a yeah, case yeah because at least before it was a case and he could just right after that now it's him as like a it's like a moral call that he's had to make for himself to go and do this yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, becoming more of a human being, I guess. Is yeah, pretty say. much. So, yeah, so he's off to Eros, and the team's found the rock. We don't get to see what they find at it. They just We know they get there, so we're picking up there to start the next episode. So that's cool. He's off in the ship. Obviously, the other plot line in this episode is on Earth. Avasarala goes to see Holden's mother in Montana, which we see is covered in snow. And a big part of the plot line that she talks about is that their family is raised to try and resuscitate the land. Yeah. Which obviously tells a bit more about Earth and how the, the climate's not... You know, it's changed since current day. Things have... Yeah, that's, that's mild. And, you know, that's maybe why there's a, the whole... The colony in Mars developed and they're trying to terraform Mars and all the rest of it. Mm. But we get some character stuff out of that as well. And we find out the reason why Holden left home, which is something they've been hinting at all season. Yeah. And it's that his mother actually begged him to because she couldn't live with the fact that they were raising him to do this job that she kind of came came to the realisation that was probably ill-fated and impossible. Yeah. Uh, and I think she says it's, it's horrible to raise a child believing that they're there for a reason. You know, yeah, to for just, one purpose, yeah. Whereas it's this is actually giving him a life. Yeah, he's free to go and make his own choices. Arguably, it's, it's landed him in the right shutter currently, but... He's... I would even say that's arguable. <laughs> However, as much as he's in kind of trouble, I mean, we know we hear from the uh, the other official on Earth that he's sending a Black Ops team because of the information he's got about them being on this ship and they're, they're disguised and they're going towards the station and whatever. But, so that'll be trouble next. So this Black Ops team will presumably be coming into play next episode or the one after yeah but it it, it does the thing with Holden is though is that he feels like he's been more himself like it was back to episode one where he makes the choice to 
you know, put that beacon through and log it so that they have to go. He can't let his conscience do that. The idea that he is becoming himself, uh, it's like a self-discovery thing for him almost, even if, you know, lots of people died in the process. But that wasn't his fault. He didn't know that was going to happen. Yeah, as far as we know. As far as we know. We, we did speculate a little bit of there being a, a heel turn with him, which still could happen. But... It still could. It seems less likely. Don't yeah, know, yeah. Like a lot less likely. But if if it did come out, I wouldn't be... It wouldn't, it wouldn't be out of nowhere. No, the, the pieces were there for it, but the longer we go, the less I'm inclined to think so. But at the same yeah. time, if they do flip it, it means, all right, well, it was there. We talked about it as a possibility. Yeah, it's like if, if they do reveal it now, it'll be in the season final, surely, because mm. that's the moment that you've got to do that. Yeah, like if they find Julie and he just pulls out a gun and shoots her. Yeah, and it sets up <laughs> the new status quo for, for season, season two. two. Yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe that's what happened. But... Could be. Yeah, but that, that gave us again, it gave a lot, lot of world texture stuff. It gave us, I think it gave Avasarala a little bit more of a humanity as well, because I think from the first couple of episodes when we seen her torturing the the captive, yeah, we had this opinion of her, and even though she has kids, and we find out in this one that she sent her son off, she has, she forced him to join the military because she believed that was just like a rite of passage, like everyone. And yeah, then, she says like all her family have done it. It's like yeah. something that it's it's the step towards being part of the government. Yeah, and he died in one of their big events, one of their big wars or whatever, and she has to live with that. That was her that forced him into it, but it wasn't necessarily something that he wanted to do. I mean, we don't know for yeah. sure, but... And it's kind of a nice parallel with um, Holden's mother as well, because obviously if he dies on this, like she thinks that he has at this point, then it's she's forced him into that almost by asking, like by, by begging him to leave. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a, it's a really... Like I wasn't sure what to make of their scenes at first when the, she first goes to the house, but it, it it did give us a lot by the time she left. And yeah. when she does leave, and she hears over the comms that there's going to be a black ops team sent after, her, and she kind of believes that Holden's not a terrorist yeah. now. She's kind of she's come to that conclusion based on what she's heard from his mother, uh, which is a nice spin as well. Because when she first goes in, she she gives this cynical speech about, "Oh, you're going to tell me he was such a nice boy and he could never do things like this." But by the end of the episode, she actually believes that he couldn't do this yeah so, so it's, a, it's a nice little one episode change of you know an arc if you will uh, yeah there was and so. it'll be interesting as well to see what repercussions that has on her going forward yeah uh, i agree I, I will say as well uh beautiful imagery of her walking in the red gown or you know the red hooded and yeah, it's like all white yeah, all, yeah like i i'll tell you right now the image for the, the thumbnail of this episode is going to be her walking through <laughs> the snow in red because it does look gorgeous it was so, nah, uh, the show continues to still look pretty good, and yeah, so we're, yeah. we've only got three left, this is, we're getting Yeah, getting and there. the last two the last two are two-part final, I believe. That's how they aired, so I think that's how we're going to we're going to review them, we'll review them as one. That said, let us in the comments if you think that that doesn't actually matter, if they're just two separate episodes we could do separately, then let us know in the comments if we're incorrect about that, but... They did air together, so that's the plan right now. But let us know yeah. in the comments. So, no, that's episode 7 of The Expanse. Still really enjoying it. I think uh, I'm really looking forward to season 2 now. Yeah, me too. This this was a little bit of a, a perhaps slightly weaker episode in the fact that it was, let's set up and you just kind of take mm. a break before we go into this final stretch, which is fine because it's got to be done. I think it's a good place for it, though. I do as well because it gives us a nice amount of time in this final bit as well. Because if the if the last two are a two part or finale, then the, the next one's the oh things the are going to be dark by the end of it, yeah. and then two part or to you yeah, know all the action at the end. So, yeah. and I feel like in that sense, you know, f- four was action packed. One was action packed. Four was action packed. Then you have the big two part finale. They're nicely spread out evenly throughout the season. I think that's good good pacing in that sense as well. I, I feel the show generally is really well paced. Yeah, I agree. So. No, and the one couple of things they did hold off for a long time, like holding the secret, paid off a lot because it was held for six episodes. Yeah. So, no. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, episode seven of the Expanse. Thank you very much for watching, like and subscribe, and all that stuff. Let us know what you thought of this one in the comments below, and we'll see you tomorrow for episode eight.